us about some of your sexual fantasies. Objection. Um, objection being irrelevant. And that would be one of them. It might also be harassing. <laughs> I don't think it's relevant, Mr. Feiger, her sexual Do you family. like to talk about your sexual fantasy? Same objection. No, that's as rel this is going to be relevant, Your Honor. No, he wants to tie it into what she... Mr. Feiger, you want to discuss and then ask if she would be willing to expose her sexual fantasy. Would you be willing to expose your sexual fantasies here? That's not something that I do, no. Why not? I'm a private person. I see. But apparently you don't give the same respect to other people, do you? Yes, I do. Oh, you do. Do you remember calling people up on the phone that you'd never met and asking every single person who you called up what their sexual fantasies were in regard to this show? Do you remember doing that? No, because I did not call every single person and ask them what their fantasies were. Oh, excuse me. Um, you mean Ron and you called every single person on the show and asked them what their sexual fantasies were, didn't you? No. You didn't ask them what kind of... When you called up the people for this show, you didn't ask them what kind of restaurants they liked, did you? Uh, um, no. You didn't ask them what kind of movies they liked, did you? I can't remember specifically what I asked people. You didn't ask them what kind of music they liked, did you? I don't believe so. And if one of them, for instance, should happen to tell you that, for instance, they like outdoors, um, that wouldn't be something that you would want Jenny Jones to ask during the show because that's not the type of show you have, is That's wrong. I love the outdoors. Did you see that? I do. I love the outdoors. But when it came time for you to write a blue card that prompted Ms. Jones uh, as to what she should talk about with Scott Amador, you left out any part about what he said. You claimed he said about loving the outdoors. Crush on him since the day I met. He was under the car, wanted to rip off his clothes, had a quick under the car fantasy, hammock fantasy, gray in bed, lighter than me. He might be suspicious. I detest feminine guys, suspect John is gay or else he wouldn't pursue it. He's delicious. You left out the part about the outdoors, didn't you? On the blue card, but not in the pre-interview. Did I ask you that question? What question? Would you like to complete this in a relatively short way? Who wouldn't? Then would you please answer my question? I believe Did I you include did. it on the blue card? No, I told you that I didn't. Okay. Now, I'm going to hand you the pre-interview sheets here. And let's talk about, are you fixated personally? Do you have a personal fixation on people's sexual fantasies? No. Are you addicted to telephone sex? No. Objection. Then where did you Excuse get me. the idea? Objection. What did you say? She <laughs> asked her whether she was addicted to telephone sex. I objected to it. I didn't get some Thank you. And since you, and since you don't like to expose your private fantasies to other people, could you tell me what was it about your job or your assignment that gave you the idea that it was even appropriate for you to ask strangers about sexual fantasies. I asked it if they had already offered it. I would follow up with a question about it. Well, you know that's not true, don't you? That isn't what you did in any of these things. Actually, yes, that is what I did. Well, as a matter of fact, it doesn't even... You know, right here, off the bat. Did you fantasize about him? That's you, isn't it? Yes. He didn't offer it. You asked him. Yes, I'm going to hand you. These are all in evidence. First, talk about uh, the pre-interview with Eric Smith. Did 
did you ask this young man the question, so you like his body? Yes or no? I did. Did you ask this young man the question, do you think he's bisexual? I did. And without being told about anything, like you claimed just a moment ago, did you ask this young man, do you fantasize about it? Uh, I did. Now, he didn't say anything about a fantasy before you asked him, did he? Well, he was already talking about what he did to get close to him, dancing, and if it was a date, he would be in heaven. The natural progression of the conversation led me to ask about fantasizing. What? Explain that one to us. Saying that he'd like to go to the movies and a theater, the natural progression for you was to ask about sexual fantasies. Explain that one to us. Well, in the pre-interview, he um, talked about when he brushed up to him, it was like, wow, and if it was a date, he would be in heaven. And I think most people, when they have a secret crush, they do fantasize about them, and it doesn't always have to be in a sexual capacity. But when they're talking about dreaming, being with them, and if it was a date, the natural progression of the conversation leads to asking them about, do you fantasize about them? Being steep. <clears throat> Ask Mr. Steep. You only asked a few questions here. Where's the craziest place you ever had sex? Now, how did you get to that one? Since the question before that was, what's your idea of a romantic evening? And apparently he said, drinking wine in the mountains. And apparently, the natural progression to that question is, where's the craziest place you ever had sex? Explain to the court and jury, ma'am, since you consider your private sexual affairs to be private, how you got to that. I didn't do this pre-interview, Ron Musianti did, so I can't speak for Ron in the way that he does pre-interviews. I can only speak to myself. So apparently you and him have uh, similar uh, interests in terms of sex. Jennifer Nicole Blevins, do you fantasize about him? As I said, Ron did this pre-interview. Is that a question? Huh? That is the question that Ron did ask him. How do you compare yourself sexually to a straight woman? Is that a question? Ron asked him that question. Why, why isn't there any respect for the privacy of people about sex with regard to the questions that are asked? Well, if a guest was uncomfortable with any of the questions, they would tell us. We've had that in the past and we respect that. If there's something they don't want to talk about, then we respect My that. My question is why do you, unless they tell you, why don't you respect them in advance? I did respect them in my pre-interviews, if you notice. Oh, you do? Uh, Dave Liggett, are you nervous, you ask him. This is totally, he says, this is an unknown. I think this will be fun. This is the 90s, so whatever happens is fine with me. And, of course, the next question you ask him is... What if it was a transvestite? That's a logical progression. <laughs> It right? is a logical progression with me. It's a logical progression only if you really know what you're doing is setting up a lurid sexual fantasy show to embarrass and humiliate people. Isn't that true? No, I don't agree with that. Did you ever ask Jonathan Schmitz if it was all right with him to bring him on a stage and have somebody talk about tying him up to a hammock and more rubbing whipped cream? over him. Specifically, no. Did he ever give you permission to do that? Well, he obviously didn't give permission if we didn't ask him that question. Jenny Jones doesn't give people to Chicago, does she? It's you, the associate and, pro and associate producers and producers who get people to the show, right? We're in charge of that. Yeah. Okay. Are you looking at somebody? Are they giving you signals over there? No, no one's giving me signals. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, is there something on going on over there you're looking at? I was at? actually looking at the gentleman back there. He looks like a man I know. I see. Did you, maybe you should ask him his fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to? Yeah.